Have you ever wondered what makes Swedes, well, Swedish? Not just the culture or language, but the actual DNA inside people living in Sweden today. The story isn't as simple as Vikings and snowy forests. It's a journey that starts tens of thousands of years ago, long before Sweden had cities or kings, and it shows how migrations, cultures, and even climate shaped the people we see today. Sweden is the largest country in Scandinavia, and its name is believed to come from the Proto-Indo-European root Sve, meaning one's own. That referred to one's own tribe during ancient times. Even the Roman historian Tacitus, around 98 AD, called the northern people the Sver, or Suyones. But what about their genes? How did ancient movements and migrations shape modern Swedes? To understand Swedish DNA, we need to go back to the last ice age. Sweden was covered by a massive sheet of ice called the Scandinavian Ice Sheet for thousands of years. It only finally melted about 11,700 years ago. As the ice receded, the first humans returned. These were hunter-gatherers, similar to Western hunter-gatherers from the rest of Europe. But Sweden also saw an influx of Eastern hunter-gatherers. When these groups mixed, they became what we call Scandinavian hunter-gatherers. But hunter-gatherers weren't the only influence. Later, farmers from Anatolia, that's modern-day Turkey, moved north, bringing agriculture to Sweden. They weren't alone. Steppe people connected to the Yamnaya culture also contributed. This mix of hunter-gatherers, Neolithic farmers, and steppe ancestry created the foundational genetics of Sweden. Around 3500 to 2300 BCE, the pitted ware culture existed, believed to descend mostly from the Scandinavian hunter-gatherers. At the same time, another group called the Funnel Beaker culture, originating from what is now Germany, spread into southern Scandinavia. Funnel Beaker farmers are closely related to Central European farming populations, bringing agriculture to Northern Europe. Then came the steppe people again, this time in the form of the corded ware and battle axe cultures, roughly 3000 to 2300 BCE. Corded ware individuals carried mostly the R1A Y-DNA haplogroup, with some R1B. These haplogroups are still common in Sweden today, and were likely introduced by these groups along with their steppe ancestry. So if we look at ancient Sweden, its DNA was already a mix, Scandinavian hunter-gatherers, Neolithic farmers, and steppe migrants. This is similar to what happened in other parts of Europe, but Sweden had its own unique blend, shaped by climate, geography, and these waves of migration. Fast forward to the Viking period. Recent research, including a 2023 study analyzing nearly 300 ancient genomes and over 16,000 modern individuals, sheds light on how Swedish genetics evolved from the Roman Iron Age to the present. One key finding is the clear difference between northern and southern Sweden. This pattern has existed since at least the Viking period and is largely due to varying levels of Uralic ancestry. Uralic ancestry comes from populations in Finland, Estonia, the Sami people, and regions near the Ural Mountains in Russia. Northern Sweden shows higher levels of this ancestry, while southern Sweden has less. The Vikings themselves also brought new genes into Sweden, particularly from Britain and Ireland. Interestingly, some of this gene flow was female-biased, meaning women from Britain and Ireland may have been brought to Sweden, possibly as slaves or wives, though some, like one high-status British-Irish woman, appear to have been integrated into the community in important ways. The Viking period also saw Eastern Baltic ancestry moving into central Sweden and the island of Gotland. Gotland's location made it a natural entry point for migration and trade from the east. However, modern Swedes from the south and central regions have relatively lower levels of Eastern Baltic ancestry than their Viking Age ancestors. This suggests later migrations diluted this genetic contribution over time. Some South European ancestry from Italy also arrived in southwest Sweden during the Viking period, but it was minor and doesn't have a major influence today. 
After the Viking Age, Sweden continued to see migrations. German settlers arrived during the Hanseatic period. People moved between Norway, Denmark, Finland, and Sweden throughout history. Notably, during the 16th and 17th centuries, Finnish migrants, known as the Forest Finns, moved into Sweden and Norway, leaving traces of Finnish ancestry that still exist today. So, what about Swedish genetics? Studies show that four major Y-DNA haplogroups dominate male lineages. I1, R1b, R1a, and N1c. I1 is the most common and has a long history in Scandinavia, dating back to the Vikings. Its spread is linked to both Viking expansion and migrations of Germanic peoples. R1b and R1a come from steppe-related groups, including the corded ware culture, while N1c is associated with Uralic ancestry, particularly high in Finland and among the Sami people. On the maternal side, mitochondrial haplogroup H is most common, along with U5 and T. This reflects a mix of ancestry similar to what we see on the paternal side, hunter-gatherers, farmers, steppe peoples, and later migrations. When you put it all together, Swedish DNA tells a story of constant movement, mixing, and adaptation. From the first hunter-gatherers after the Ice Age, to Neolithic farmers, to steppe migrants, Viking explorers, British and Irish connections, Eastern Baltic traders, South Europeans, and Finnish settlers. All of these threads come together in the DNA of people living in Sweden today. It's a story written in the genes, one that shows just how dynamic human history really is. If you want to explore the genetic history of Sweden's neighbor Germany, subscribe our channel.